Hey everybody, Adam here with Whipworks, and this is the Whipworks How to Make a Bullwhip series, where I'll be showing you how to make a professional quality bullwhip. The first step of this bullwhip is our core. I wish we could start off the whip making process with an easy step, but unfortunately, we have to start with the core, which has a couple tricky bits to it. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the process. First, let's go over the tools we're gonna need. We're going to need a quarter inch steel rod, I'll be using a 10 inch handle in this video, so I've cut this to 10 inches. You're going to need some quarter inch shrink tubing. Now these are two different types of shrink tubing that I have found over the years. Every shrink tubing that I've purchased is a little different, even though both of these are labeled as quarter inch shrink tubing. So that's frustrating, but just use what you have and try the best with the material you can find. This one's cut to one and a quarter inches or one inch, and then this is cut to two inches. Now, if you're making an eight footer, a 10 footer, or a 12 footer, you're also going to need a three and a half or four inch piece of three eighths inch diameter shrink tubing that I have here as well. You're gonna need some athletic tape, artificial sinew, very important. You'll be using artificial sinew a lot in this whip. And here's a material that was introduced to me by Nick from Nick's Whip Shop. This is Rug Liner. Here's the specific brand of Rug Liner that I use. It's the Lock Lift Rug Gripper. I actually find that uh, Menards has the best pricing on this. I use this quarter inch sinker cord for my cores. Now this is great because it kind of sheaths over the top of a quarter inch steel rod. So I'll show you how I use that to our advantage in the video. And this is also more thick than paracord, so it's a lot easier to load with our next material, shot. This is nickel plated lead shot, and this specifically is number nine shot. Um, you can also use number eight. I have used number seven in the past. I prefer number eight or nine shot though for this. Steel shot also works really well. It's a little bit more expensive. This is that nickel plated lead. Um, I don't like using regular lead. I used to use lead shot, but it gets off on, rubs off on your fingers and then you get nervous about lead poisoning. So I uh, like to keep away from lead shot as much as possible. And those are all of our materials. So let's grab our six footer blueprint and get working on the core of our bullwhip. The first step according to our blueprint is the core. Now I'm gonna show you two different methods for the core here. The first is something you can do with materials and tools probably laying around your house. And the second uses a specialized tool but makes this process a whole lot easier. So. Using this first method, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our steel rod. So for this video, I'm gonna be making a six footer with a 10 inch handle. So I have here a 10 inch steel rod. This is something that is not in the blueprint, but it's something I do for every whip and it's pretty straightforward. I am going to melt a small piece of quarter inch shrink tubing onto the end of this whip. And this is what our shrink tubing is going to lock onto later. You'll understand here in a bit. But the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this file and along the top inch here of this quarter inch steel rod, I'm just going to file it here. Okay, so now you can see, I'll focus here. I've added a bunch of scores there. I'm gonna take my shrink tubing here. I'm gonna sheath it over and I'm gonna leave just a little bit of overhang here. Do you see how it's kind of hanging over the tip there? And then I'm gonna melt it with my ridiculous blowtorch, which I love. Notice how I'm not burning it. I'm like moving the flame here. Keeps the shrink tubing from melting too fast. So maybe you can see here now where it melted, it kind of bites into those scores, the scores that I made so that this thing isn't moving. And also you can see it overhangs just a little bit there. So we have a nice soft edge. 
Now, the next step is to cut our piece of sinker cord to length. So I've got my vinyl tape measure that I use constantly in whip making, and I'm gonna measure off, according to our blueprint, for the tie-off method, which is the first method we're going to use, I need 68 inches. And I always like to give myself an extra half inch or show. So just for good measure. For the six footer, I need to tie off 15 inches. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> I'm gonna take my artificial sinew and I'm gonna loosely tie this, I'm gonna eyeball this and I'm just gonna loosely, come on, tie a single knot here or just a loop around kind of where I think that 15 inch mark is. So now we got that there. And then we're gonna take our tape measure and we're going to measure 15 inches. And I was a little bit too long so I need to bring this in. All right, so there we go. Now we got that at 15 inches. Okay. Just throw that aside here. All right, get this nice and tight now. And then I'm gonna take my cord here and I am going to put this in between my legs. You can see this cord is nice and tight because I'm sitting on the artificial sinew. And I'm going to roll it towards me. And notice this is the, this is the 15 inch side here. I'm going away from the 15 inch side to start. And then I'm gonna take this extra piece of string that I have and I'm gonna pack it in, pack it in here with the loop on the underside of where I'm about to roll. So I'm gonna roll that into the cord as well. So I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We got our 15 inch piece here. We got the rest over here. And we got this loop here. This is a technique I use throughout the whip making process, so I hope this makes sense for you. So I've got this loop here, and I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm gonna trim maybe about an inch off. There we go. I'm gonna continue to hold this firm here. I'm gonna lace this into that loop. Okay, maybe you can kind of see what I'm doing now. I'm gonna self-lock this. Then I'm gonna grab onto that string on the other side, and I'm gonna pull, and then it pulls itself meh, all the way through. And there we go, and that's really firmly on there, and that's not going anywhere. So now we have to load this 15 inch piece up to eight and a half inches of our shot. Now, I've got a big old barrel of shot here, <laughs> a big old barrel. Now I have here a pen, that I have removed the ink from. So as you can see, there's no tip there and I've removed the back here. So it's just the hot, it's hollow. Now I'm gonna take the pointy end of the pen here and I've got the 15 inch, the 15 inch piece. And I'm gonna stick that pen inside there. And I'm gonna take some tape uh, for this, I use electrical tape because it's kind of stretchy and has a good stick to it. And I'm going to stick it on here. Make sure it's on there nicely. Boom. Good deal. Wrap nice and wrapped around. Trim that off. Woo! And get that on there. There you go. Now, don't tug this, of course, but you can see it's on there pretty good. 
So I've got this baggie here of our number nine shot. So I'm gonna, I've got our taped pen to our doodad, being careful here to make sure that this uh, tape holds strong. So I'll open up this baggie and be careful here. Don't get, you know, these shot BBs everywhere. They get into everything. I'm just gonna put the pen in here and I'm gonna kind of scoop up some of this material. Not too much or else it'll get bunched up here in a second, which, and I'll show you. So, you know, I've got like a, maybe an inch or so of material there. And then I'm going to, using both hands, well, this hand here, I'm gonna kinda give the, fatten up the sinker cord here so that the shot has a path to go down. And as you can hear now, when I shake it, well, there's one piece left in there. Let's see if I can get it. And then once, once all the material is out of the pen, then I can do this. And using both hands, I'm going to massage very gently. It's not about pushing. You're letting gravity take the, take the shot. And really all you're doing is fattening the sinker cord to give, give the shot a chance to roll down the length of the sinker cord. Where we have it tied off. And we're going to massage it all the way down to where we have it tied off. And then rinse and repeat. Now you can see we have this loaded to about eight and a half inches. I'll go through one more time, kind of massage it down, get it nice and packed in there. Now, in order to get our eight and a half inches of loaded core onto our handle, we're gonna need our blowtorch or our lighter, our handle with the uh, shrink tubing on it, and then I use this one, two, three block. You'll see what I need it for here in a second. Now I'm gonna cut this, trim this off an inch and a half away, kind of leaving plenty of material here. And I'm gonna trim that off. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to sheath it over the top here. Come on, sheath it over the top. really hard to do on camera. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to massage it on there. And you want to make sure that you can feel it. You can't see it here, but I can feel shrink tubing ends around here. And then we've got this extra material here. Okay. Now this is a pretty quick maneuver here. So I hope everything will stay in focus for us. Now I'm going to melt this with our lighter just on the bottom here. Come on, I hope you can see, there we go. Okay, we're a little bit better in focus here. Come on. Okay, so we're melted. And now I'm gonna take it at an angle here and I'm gonna roll it, roll it on there. There we go. And now we've got this locked in place. Any number of flat surfaces will do, but you really want to be able to have an angle. You don't want to roll it flat because it's not really going to do anything. You really need just a little bit of angle so that you get this nice kind of cone here and it really locks on there. Now here is the second technique that I use. So here's this tool that I have. This is one quarter inch refrigerator tubing, copy, copper tubing. It, comes in a pack coil like this. So I've cut about a three foot length here and I've straightened it out and then I've taken a funnel and using some extra uh, shrink tubing to fatten it up and then some epoxy, I've epoxied it here to the inside of it. I'll take my handle before loading the core, I will attach 
the uh, I will attach my sinker cord to the handle, get that burnt like I just showed you, and make sure it's nice and tight on there. I will take the other end and I will sheath the shrink tubing over the top of this. Are you seeing how much easier this is going to be? So then I go all the way down to the handle. And what I do is I hang this up on a hook of some sort and it's just dangling there. I just dump my shot into this and then while this is hanging, and then I take two hands and I massage the shot down and then I'll pull the core down just a little bit further and then I'll massage the shot down. This technique does take a little finesse, getting it sheathed over this quarter inch tubing. Sometimes the sinker cord is a little more narrow at spots. I don't know if in the manufacturing process it gets too hot and it shrinks or what, but it won't go any further down on to the, the cord here. So either you can throw that piece of slinky cord that didn't work out, that didn't fit over the copper tubing away, or um, you can load it the way that I just showed you. So it's good to check to make sure that the slinky cord will fit all the way over before you use this technique. But this technique is a lot faster and uh, it's saved me a lot of time in the past. Now that we've got this all done, we need a couple more steps here. First of which, we need to take our two inch piece of shrink tubing and we need to get it right, we need to get it right there. So to do that, we're going to, we don't need that anymore. You know what, this is a lot easier to do if this is melted. I'm gonna lace this through and we're gonna pull it through. Now it's gonna need some massaging to get over our cord part here. We're gonna get it down. Now once we get it down to here, it's gonna really need some massaging to get there. So we're just gonna pull it over and each time we pull it over, it'll get a little bit further down now what I like to do is I like to take a scrap piece of leather so that this doesn't rip my hands up. I'm just gonna take it and I wanna kind of massage it through here. Everything is so much more difficult when you're filming. Okay, and I'm gonna massage it over. Kinda with my pinky, kinda here. Massage it over, pulling. This is something we're trying to avoid. You see it's kind of crinkling up there at the top. So that's gonna make it really difficult to massage over. So, but I'm just gonna keep working with it. Nice and slow, just little, little bits at a time. We're gonna get it down as far as we can. And then I'll show you a trick here to fix it up. Okay. So we've got it down to here, and that is, that is about as far as this piece of shrink tubing wants to go. That's okay, that's okay. I'm gonna show you a trick here. So we've got it down to there-ish. That'll stay on, but ideally it would have gone down to like here, so up top it would have gone down to like here, so we want to trim it here, but we got to do it without damaging the sinker cord. So here's what I do. So we're going to take it here and we're going to place our knife's edge at the spot that we want to cut it down to. And we're going to spin it around. Now we're not cutting all the way through it here. We are just scoring a line. Okay, let's see if you can see this line here. Do you see that? I'm just scoring it. There we go, there we go, that looks good to me. We got a nice, just a scored edge there. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna very gently trim it up to that line or just before that line. We don't wanna go past the line. 
don't go past the line because when you melt it, it'll flay open at that point. So you just want to get to the line and then very gently pull. And there we go. You see here, it's just, it's just tearing along. It's just nicely tearing along that scored line that we made. There we go. And there we have it. And now that looks, that is a much better length for what we want. And then just like before, we're going to, come on, very gently without melting the sinew, or the, uh, not the sinew, the, without melting the cord here. Probably shouldn't do that with the razor right there. Okay, there we go. There is our shrink tubing over the top here. Um, this is the beginning of our transition. For this next step in our core, we're going to need uh, what we've made so far, and then also our uh, rug liner. And this is cut to one and a quarter inch thickness, and I need to trim off a four inch piece of this material. And I like to be pretty exact with this. So four inches. And then going to remove the liner. Like that with my fit. And then what I like to do is take my scissors and cut it, give it a little angle on either side here. And this way it kind of wraps around my core a little better. So I'm gonna set this here, get this, get my core in the vise. I'm going to get this, here's our center point. I'm gonna get this as centered as possible so it's as even on both sides as I can get it here. And then I'm going to, by hand, kind of wrap this in place. Oops, missed my placement there. And it's kind of sticky. It'll kind of stick to itself. So if you just kind of wrap it, then it'll stay there for a little bit. And here, let me. I'm gonna take my artificial sinew and we're going to just tie a little knot, not a double knot, just a simple knot that'll lay flat just to hold it in place. And then once we wrap it around itself a couple times, it'll hold itself in place here. And we're gonna wrap just regularly, kind of like this. We're going to wrap a little bit past the uh, center point, and then we're gonna go back over itself, and we're gonna wrap several times right on this transition here. Whoops, make sure it doesn't fall out of our vise, and Smack us in the face. All right, and once we have a little bulge going there, we'll go back down the length here. Be really gentle uh, wrapping around this section where the shrink tubing stops and then it's just the sinker, the loaded sinker cord. It'll kind of bunch up on you there. So just kind of be a little bit softer as you're wrapping around that. And then also wrap softly once you get past the rug liner here. I'm just gonna very lightly wrap this. I'm not gonna tightly wrap it or else it'll pull in the sinker cord and you'll have a little bunched section. And then what I like to do is flip this 180 degrees here so that the underside is now revealed. And then I'll kind of wrap around the sections that I did not have revealed previously. 
I'll do a little X around that awkward transition spot uh, where the shrink tubing stops and then it's just the sinker cord, the loaded sinker cord. And then we'll do more wraps just around that transition point again. And then we'll go up and we're gonna grab our piece of um, either extra piece of artificial sinew or I like to use this uh, Kevlar string, this super strong material, um, it's super thin. I have a little bit of that laying around and then I like to wrap around it one, two, three, four, five, six, I find seven times to be the kind of a perfect amount. And then I'll trim it. Oh, oh. You can't see what I'm doing. And then I trimmed it here and then loop it inside of itself like we've done previously. Ah! Losing my grip here. And then pull it through and it self locks. And then I trim it. And now we're gonna wrap it with some athletic tape. I like to go from the, I like to go from the handle, just kind of this angle. And for this first wrap of athletic tape, I will go maybe halfway between where the artificial sinew stops and I have it tied off and this, and it's no longer loaded. So we'll go maybe halfway here and then trim. I like to roll this little piece here, this piece that we like super wrapped right at that transition from the steel rod to the sinker cord. And normally I'll, you know, I'll just give that a roll with my one, two, three block here. Sorry, ruler's making a lot of noise. Let's kind of flatten that out a bit. And there's our core. So that was the core of our bull whip. In the next video, we'll be covering the six plat layer of our whip, and we'll actually get to start plaiting. If you have any questions about what we went over in this video, whether that be the materials that I use or the techniques that I showed you, please comment down below. I'm gonna try and answer as many of those as possible. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you wanna see more whip related content, feel free to subscribe. And as always, Happy cracking.